Uh, it is winter. Uh, your clan uh, had a successful uh, summer and fall. Uh, you had you were able to put a lot of stores aside, preserve a lot of uh, food for the winter, uh, and you you made it to your your winter uh, uh, grounds that you're that you're staying in, uh, largely. Uh, for, for your your particular clan, you have a cave uh, system that you generally go back to every winter um, and and just kind of weather out the storms as much as possible there. And, and on the good days, you can go out and kind of, um, you know, do some do some winter trapping and that kind of thing if need be. Uh, uh, but so far, it's been a, a fairly uneventful winter. Um, uh, but it, it has gotten colder, and uh, a blizzard has uh, begun. It's, it's uh, started the previous day, um, and uh, you know, has, has raged throughout the night. Um, uh, the previous night, as, as you were uh, uh, here in, in the cave, the, the, the big thing that, uh, that is kind of on everybody's mind a little bit is that um, uh, one of the elders of the village, uh, a man named Torval, uh, is, has, has got the sick. Um, he's had fever and um, has been kind of uh, a little bit, um, uh, it seems like he is speaking uh, with the spirits uh, sometimes kind of during his, during his sleep and, and feverish uh, sweating and that kind of thing. Um, this is definitely uh, concerned everybody in the uh, in the clan, uh, he is a respected elder, and uh, you know, certainly uh, this is not how uh, anyone wants him to, to pass on to the spirits, uh, if, if possible. Um, uh, there was a young girl, uh, his granddaughter, na who's named Ira, uh, E-I-R-A, I'll put that in the chat here. Uh, and the elder is Torval. Um, uh, uh, she has been kind of watching over him uh, basically ever ever since the, the fever came on him um, and she has been uh, you know, sitting by his side and, and, and watching him. Uh, Ira's about eight years old, I would say, um, and uh, just very concerned about uh, her grandfather. Um this uh as as uh he he kind of seemed to to be getting worse uh the night uh the night before and uh this morning uh as you wake up uh and and kind of survey the cave um you all realize uh that that he is not doing well at all and uh it does not take long before uh before everyone realizes that Ira is missing. Um, and uh, uh, her, her mother, uh, uh, one of your uh, fellow clan members, uh, would uh, definitely be in a, a little bit of a state of, of worry about that, uh, because going out into a raging blizzard uh, is really the only other place that she could be if she is not in the cave proper. Um, so with that kind of as the setting of, of the morning's mood here in the cave, uh, why don't we have you guys really quick uh, kind of introduce yourself and uh, your, your, your character, I guess, and uh, just tell us a little bit about, uh, about your character. Uh, Scott, why don't we start with you with Kerchek? Sure. Um... Her check is, um, I think he's a little bit of a, a loner. I mean, he's definitely part of the clan, I think, and very loyal to the clan. But um, as, a, as a hunter, he is very used to and I think often prefers uh, being by himself, you know, kind of going out and being um, kind of in, in, in solitude. Um, I think he has a very strong... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think moral compass, I guess, is the is the is the word to use. Like, um, very strong in his belief system. Like, seeing Torval like this is very upsetting to him because uh, a, a man should not die on his back. A man should die on his feet. 
you know, and so he understands um, wanting to do anything we can to help uh, Torval uh, through this. Um, I don't know. If, uh, I haven't thought so far into thinking if Kerchak has like a like a family, like a like a wife or, or child or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for now, I'm going to say he does not, but he is very much part of this clan. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody would be, uh, or, or you know, most people would certainly be related or connected somehow, either through the clan or yeah. the tribe, uh, the larger yeah. tribe uh, somehow. Um, excellent. Uh, Bella, why don't you uh, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about Bello here? Um, let's see. Oh. I haven't flushed him out a whole, whole lot, but I was thinking that he was maybe um, taken in by the tribe at a young age. Um, maybe he was uh, lost from his original tribe or something and uh, taken in. He doesn't really feel at home, but still... Uh, respects and appreciates the clan that has taken him in and um, definitely is happy to have a group um, for the benefit of survival. But he's maybe not the most um, loving person, <laughs> um, I guess. Um, if, if he found some other kind of um, situation that would benefit him more he might uh go off on his own yeah it's kind of a wild card a little bit maybe <laughs> uh how roughly how old do you kind of think he is um i would say he's young like maybe late teens kind of uh right now going uh you know he's he's a new man and trying to figure himself out. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, excellent. Uh, Cora, tell us a little bit about, about Cora here. Okay. Um, I think Cora is very bold and um, maybe maybe a bit loud. Um, she's young and really trying hard to prove herself as independent and strong and capable um, to maybe avoid a match that she's not necessarily excited about. Uh, very much focused on proving herself to everyone that she can be a successful and helpful part of the tribe without necessarily ending up in a match. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, gotta assert yourself a little bit there, definitely, to to make sure things are are going the way that that you want them to, and not the way necessarily the tribe or the family wants everything to to play out. Uh, very cool. Um, uh, for uh, for Kerchak, how uh, how old Scott do you think Kerchak is roughly? Um, I see him up whatever approaching middle age is <laughs> i don't know the life expectancy of um our people um but uh, a weathered adult you know yeah. approaching middle age okay. uh, no, no, that's good um uh, and on that note just just for the kind of the side note of everything uh ages probably would have been not dissimilar to ours it's just that uh you know a a, a lifespan could be fairly normal but there was a higher, you know, mortality rate, uh, especially around births and that kind of thing, kind of, you know, kind of like it was through a lot of history up until more modern medicine. Um, you know, but if, if you survive childhood, you could, you could conceivably leave, lead a reasonably long, uh, normal okay. life. Um, so yeah. Um, so, uh, Kind of as this morning dawns, uh, and as kind of the the news of of Ira disappearing spreads throughout the the camp, um, uh, 
her, you know, her worried mother is, is there kind of talking to anybody that, sh that, that will listen. Uh, what is it that draws the three of you to want to be the ones to go out and search for her? I think Cora oh. has probably been like in a hold me back kind of position. <laughs> the first one to start vocally loudly saying, let's go, I'll find her. Yeah. And I think uh, Kerchak, as with, with his history of kind of being a hunter and knowing, well, I don't know how familiar he is with, with this particular uh, land that they're in now, like this kind of their, their winter home, mm -hmm. um, but just kind of with the knowledge of how dangerous it can be anywhere out there by yourself, um, wants to make sure that we can return her safely. Like, someone should be out there with her. If it's not us, then who? Yeah. What about for Bello? I think Bello is looking for uh, looking for the adventure and uh, possibly uh, discovering something from his past while he's out there. Ooh. I like it. Uh, so, yeah, so I would say, you know, kind of the um, uh, the three of you kind of take on this mantle, you all, for, for your own individual reasons, kind of step up and, and suggest that you will uh, head out into the blizzard uh, and away from the safety of, and warmth of the camp to go in search of the young girl Ira. How uh, as, old, like, is young girl Ira, like, are, is she a child? Is she an adult? So she would be probably about eight years old. Um, oh, okay. Which, okay. Uh, which to be to be clear, for, for the clan, that means that she is a bit trained at this point, right? Like, by eight, you're going to have some skills already. Sure. Um, you know, you're not, you're certainly not a full, uh, you know, full adult or anything like that, but you're going to have at least some, some basic survival skills. So it's not... You know, it's not a panic of, like, necessarily, like, she's definitely just, you know, dead somewhere out there, you know, she, <laughs> theoretically. Right. But but she also is only eight. And there's a lot of things that can go right. wrong. Right. Yeah. Yes. With her being eight, I think, definitely informs the urgency as well, though. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is uh, there is one other kind of wrinkle to this. Uh, last night around the campfire... Um, the uh, some of the, some of the uh, some of the folks around the fire were, were telling stories, uh, and as you as you think back on them, um, you remember that one of the stories that was told around the fire was about uh, a flower uh, that is that that your clan calls a summer whisper. Um, it's a it's a certain flower that blooms in the in the middle of winter. And it has uh, medicinal properties that you would use to treat an illness like this. Um, and you know, some of, some of the talk around the fire last night was definitely, uh, you know, some of the some of the tales around uh, around treating illness and injury, you know, with with the situation that was going on. Uh, and uh, Ira's mother would certainly. Uh, uh, say that that she noticed that Ira was paying very close attention to those stories uh, the night before, and she's she's worried that that is what possibly the girl has gone in search of. Do we um, do we know where this um, where this flower would grow? Is there like is it known to be growing like? in the shade? Is it a high altitude thing? Is it by the river? Do we have like a general idea of where one could find this? Aha. And that brings us to our first dice roll of the game. <laughs> uh, if you would like to make a, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let you do either history or survival for this. Okay. Let's see which one's better. Oh, history. good. The history is negative one. Yeah. His history survival. is going to kind of... 
Oh, history. I was going to say history is going to give you more like uh, if you know anything kind of from the, the stories and, and things that were told uh, around the fire and survival is going to be based on kind of your knowledge of the area. Um, that's a 22. I mean, yeah, that's a 22. That is literally the best you could roll on that. Uh, <laughs> yes. So so the winter, the winter grounds that you were in, I mean, this is uh, the way the way your clan would work. Uh, is is you kind of follow the same patterns every year, and you have territories that, you know, have been in your case, you know, home for thirty or forty years at this point that you've you know cycled through every uh, every year over the seasons. Um, so you would have a you would have a reasonable sense of what you could expect to find uh, around here and where um, where you might find that particular flower. Uh, uh, you know, for you, what you're remembering is that it's um, the closest place that you remember it growing is uh, kind of out uh, several hours away. Uh, you have there's like a um, a river that you have to cross and kind of head out into uh, into a, a forested area. And somewhere out there, uh, there is uh, this flower that grows. So yeah, you you have a you have a pretty good sense of of roughly where it would be. You don't know if Ira would have that sense, but that's where you would think it is. Sure. Um, I, I go ahead and I, I relay that to um, to Cora and Bello. Um, you know, with having seen it, I believe it'd be over there in that area. Yeah. Uh, as the <laughs> omniscient narrator said, we don't know if that is, uh, if uh, Ira would know that, but if we have to pick a direction to go, that's the direction I would pick. I think that's the get a start as um, any. Um, all right. Well, if that is. If that... Yeah, if that is if that is the start that you would like to make, um, what we will do is say that you know you you bundle up and, and gather your gear to head out into the into the winter. Um, you know, heavy furs to, to help guard against the cold. You make sure you have food with you. Uh, any any weapons that you're that you need to take. Uh, you know, make sure that everything's in good working order before you head out. Uh, you know, also even taking water in, in some some water skins and, and that kind of thing. Um, and you get ready to head out. Um, uh, whoever would like to, um, who thinks that they have a good uh, survival skill uh, and are good at tracking, uh, if you would like to, you can go ahead as you as you head out into the blizzard. You can also roll a survival check. Whoever would like to uh, to see if you can pick up on any any clues to the trail that Ira may or may not have left behind. I can do that. All right. So I just click on the red survival words? Yes. Okay. That work? There, there it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. So with a seven, uh, so uh, just just to kind of explain how the how the dice roll works here. Um, we're going to pick the seven because I didn't say you had advantage or or disadvantage is just a straight roll so we're picking that first number um and or using the first number uh so in this case the way that that number relates to your character is um at least as you as you head out you are not picking up any sense of a trail uh you know perhaps the blizzard was you know has, has blown for too long you're, you're just not finding anything just here around the cave uh so uh at this point Probably your best bet is to head, uh, as as Kerchek has has said, based on his knowledge and hope. Maybe you can kind of pick up her trail uh, if you start heading in that direction. Uh, so I would say that, that is kind of the uh, the sense that the party has at this point, uh, heading out into the snow. Uh, as, mm -hmm. no, that sounds good. Yeah. So as you, as you head out into the wilderness, uh, the, the full force of the blizzard uh, 
kind of hits you. Uh, the wind outside the cave picks up. Um, you know, the, the snow is swirling, and uh, it's not full whiteout conditions or anything like that. But but visibility is very limited as as uh, the snow and uh, blankets everything and and uh, uh, spirals around you, uh, and you start heading. Uh, in the direction that Kerchek uh, suggested. Uh, so, let's kind of move you out into the forest here somewhere. Um, so, as you as you go, uh, if, if somebody else uh, would like to try to make another survival check to see if they can pick up uh, as you get going here on, uh, on Kyra's trail, uh, we'll say that that you get kind of an hour into your journey and we'll kind of see what you can, can learn during that time. Hello, you want to give it a shot? Sure. All right. Um, let's see. What? Um, visibility can be limited. Um, first thought would be to climb a tree, but the visibility would be limited. Um, maybe we maybe we search for a place where she could have um, like tried to weather some of the heavier uh, winds. Yeah. Yeah, give me give me that survival check, and let's see uh, see what you can find here. All right, seventeen. Um, yeah, uh, kind of here in your first hour of travel, uh, you are going to uh, you're going to find a couple of things. Um, you do find a small. Um, a small area where there's kind of like some broken branches and, and kind of things where it does look like uh, maybe she did make a little shelter for, for a, a little while at some point overnight. Um, and because uh, it certainly, you know, it certainly looks like, like something, you know, a, a person used it. Um, you're not seeing sp specific tracks or anything like that. All of that has been been covered, but you're definitely able to be find to find that. Uh, so you do feel like you were on the correct path, at least. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, excellent. Um, so as you, uh, as you continue, uh, as you continue on, you definitely feel, uh, much more like you are, uh, you know, much more like you are on the right path. Um, uh, you know that if you keep following in this way, you're probably uh, probably about two hours away from that river crossing. Uh, you know, the, if if it wasn't blizzard conditions, you could probably get there a lot faster. But it's just, it's it's so much harder uh, in the weather and trekking through the snow and everything. Um, uh, so, uh, with that said, um, uh, we'll say another another hour passes as you are as you are tracking, uh, and. Um, if somebody would like to roll one more survival check, we'll just kind of see if you're if you're staying on track and and if you feel like you're you're following correctly or not. Here, uh, oh, check maybe. Do you want to do that one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you you definitely feel like you are staying uh, on track as as you get going. You're you're a couple hours into your journey now. Um, uh, what I would like everybody to do now is to make a constitution saving throw. Because you've been out in the weather for a couple of hours. So to do a, a saving throw, um, that is going to be uh, right under where it says like proficiency bonus on your strength. You should see a list that says strength, dexterity, constitution. Uh, those are your saving throws. Right above the skills. All right, uh, Cora is doing oh, amazingly yeah. well. 
She's uh, thriving. Yeah. Of course uh, she is. Yeah. Yeah, no, she, she, she has Stronger something to prove. Stronger than all of you. Uh, <laughs> she could have uh, done a bunch of fires. <laughs> uh, both Bello and uh, Kerchek, uh, the, the weather is starting to uh, to wear on you a little bit. Um mm. Uh, and as it does, uh, I'm going to give you each uh, one level of exhaustion. Uh, just even though oh. even though you're starting out fresh here in the day, um, this is just uh, this is just wearing on you and uh, uh, you know sapping sapping energy here as you're as you're traveling. So I have gone ahead and marked those on your sheet. Uh, so what exhaustion does is uh, basically uh, it is going to add a negative one to most things that you roll. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and it does it does stack. Basically, you do not want ten levels of exhaustion because at ten levels, uh, that's basically when you die. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, ways to recover from exhaustion mostly is uh, through through camping and rest and that kind of thing. So. Uh, if if stuff gets starts getting really bad, uh, you may have to start thinking about the timing of everything. But right now, one level, totally totally a doable sort of thing. Wouldn't worry about it yet too much. Um, all right. Uh, going to move you to a new map here as we uh, as we cross uh, over through everything. Uh, you are going to, uh, you're going to make it to the river that you know leads you uh, in the direction that you want. And and between your survival checks, you definitely feel like you are uh, on the right path uh, here. Uh, in fact, as you get close to the river, uh, near this river's edge, um, you can actually see that there is uh, again some signs of of someone passing through here. Uh, you know, within the last. Mm-hmm. 16 hours, something like that, you know, whatever whatever time frame it was that she left at night. Nobody quite knows when she left the camp. Um, uh, the tracks uh, lead across the river. Uh, so basically, um, uh, basically, you can tell that that uh, if, if this is Kyra, she came through this way and kind of crossed over uh, the river here. Uh, the river is frozen. It, it does seem to be iced over. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I will kind of throw this to you. What what all would you like to do at this point? I would like to see if the river can support the weight of a, of an adult versus an eight year old. Like, I don't like some. How can I test the the thickness and stability of this frozen river? Core volunteers. Okay. To go first, because obviously she's the most capable and probably the tiniest. So she's gonna just like power through and go across this river. That's no so funny because Kurt steps over there looking for something to throw. He's like, "I need a branch. I need a rock." And Cora's like, "I'll just walk." Yeah, Cora I mean, has things to prove. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, I mean, you definitely, you definitely could test it by, you know, by trying to, to try and with a rock. But if, if Cora is willing to just go, like, you know, that's going to happen much faster than. Uh, Cora's ready. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cora, if you. She's got visions in her head of the little girl on her shoulder and the flower behind her ear when she returns to the cave. She's ready. All right. Uh, all right. I'm going to move you right over there. Um, uh, you, you know, I would imagine uh, kind of everybody is, is huddled up here by the edge of the uh, edge of the river. Um, and Corey, you kind of step out uh, to see if the oh. ice will hold. Before she does, I have some rope. Can we tie some rope around her just in case she falls through? Uh, sure. Yeah. I think that's a great one. Okay. So we do that. Okay. Yeah. Cora allows it. Thank you, Corey. Just trying to, we don't want to lose you one hour into our journey. Okay. Uh, so you have it tied around her. Uh, are you holding onto the rope? Are you tying it to a tree? Like, what is what is your plan here with the other end of the rope? Um, would like to kind of like 
put it around the tree to like use it as you know stability, but not tying it to the tree because I want to be able to pull it if he does go in. Okay, so kind of kind of looped around a little bit so it gives it a little extra. Yeah, and you're kind of holding onto the other end. All right, uh, fair enough. All right, uh, Cora, you are going to step out on to the ice. Um, you know, as you do, there is kind of that that little cracking sound of, of somebody stepping on ice uh, but it does appear to hold your weight this does seem to be thick enough to uh, uh, thick enough to support you uh, at least at this point of the river good news mm-hmm. oh, I may have lost Cora briefly there we go uh, so, uh, so what would you like to do? Do you keep heading across? Like, what is? I do. Cautiously, but but going for it for sure. All right. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Cora starts crossing. You know, at some point she's going to get far enough that uh, you're going to run out of rope. Yeah. Uh, you know, when as as you see her start crossing, do you? You know, do you let go of the rope? Like, what what do you do? Um, I asked. I think we can. Uh, Kurt asks Cora, like, how 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 is she feeling? Like, are you confident in what you're doing? Kurt is always confident. Okay. <laughs> okay, because we're running out of rope, so I'm going to, you know, let go of the rope. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cora, if you want, you can you can roll a. Uh, I would give you either a nature or a perception check if you just kind of want to make sure you know what's what's going on. You can if you want to roll those, you could. Either right. one. Of them. Uh, everything seems fine. Okay. Okay. Um, can I ask them to throw me the rope and like? tie it up and like maybe try to lasso a branch or something <laughs> well I mean it's yeah. only 50 feet of rope and there's not there's not really any branches out okay. here on the river I mean there, there are a couple of like trees and stuff that are kind of you know frozen into the lake I guess and you know some rocks and stuff I guess if you wanted to try to wrap yeah. something around like a, a branch or something that's sticking out yeah you could you could do that okay I was gonna say I do that um if her check is down, uh, we could potentially follow her footsteps out to one of those more stable rocks and Ooh. try to support her from there with the rope. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> that is my plan. Yeah, uh, you guys can can feel free to move your tokens to where you would like them to to move on the map. Uh, you can even drag them with your mouse, or you you know click on them and then use the arrow keys to move them around. Either works. Okay. Oops. Yeah, it's fine. I think we hang out on the rock and let her continue on yeah. and stay close <laughs> to these other rocks so we can continue mm-hmm. to support her until the uh, widest part of the river. Yeah. Good idea. I need to go left. I mean, just those rocks that are right here. I think would be good. But, well, we're following you, babe. Okay. <laughs> okay. She goes over to the rock. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean everything. Everything seems to still be seems to still be holding at this point of the river. Okay. I think Cora just. Um, can, can I reach into the river and like reach for like a rock or a stick or something and throw it at the ice or am I too deep? I mean, at this point, I mean, there are, what I would say is everything that's kind of around you is kind of frozen in. So you would have to like try to dig it out of the ice, uh, which you can do, but that also would potentially weaken some of the ice. Okay. Can I tie the rope to my weapon and throw my weapon? Onto the ice? Sure, yeah. 
Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how far out do you kind of try to throw it? Like, like 10, 15 feet kind of over this way somewhere? Halfway in the middle between me and the next rock. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why don't you roll... Um, why don't you do a strength check for me here? So you can just uh, click on uh, in that left-hand column of, of things where all the numbers are. You can do uh, just click on strength there. And that'll be a flat strength okay. check. I'm just waiting for it to load. Yep. Oh, uh, a handy thing to know with your character sheet. Uh, in the title of when it's open, uh, at the very top where you can kind of see like it, where it has your name uh, mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, if you double click on that, it, it should have kind of like a little cross icon that comes up with it. Uh, it'll just minimize your sheet. Uh, so it stays open, but kind of minimizes it into a little tab. And you can <laughs> double click on that. Again, it'll just pop back your sheet open. Okay, so you said the strength? Yes. Under proficiency bonus? Uh, strength, uh, actually to the left of that, just at the very top, uh, right above the number, what is it? I don't remember what your strength score is, but I did it wrong. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I can I can take your strength save because it's just going to be uh, that's good. okay. Uh, you throw this uh, and uh, yeah, we'll take the thirteen. Um, okay, uh, as you throw as you throw it over. Um, it is going to. Uh, it's just going to land. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to break through with a thirteen. You haven't. You know, it, it seems like it'll withstand whatever amount of force you just you just threw with. Okay. I uh, reel it back in and head out. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is definitely kind of the most open and, and treacherous looking part. You know, it's only. It's only what 15, 20 feet across it, but it's. I mean, that's a pretty long distance on a open river of of ice. Um, so yeah, you start you start heading across. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm gonna say you probably get to right about here. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a dexterity saving throw, and let's just kind of see if you're because it's slippery. It's uh, you know this is a very um, so that is in that list right under proficiency bonus. Uh, yeah, you maintain your balance and and uh, are able to keep crossing. Uh, as uh, the rest of you uh, watch, uh, you know she seems to be doing just fine crossing over this ice. Okay. Is there anything that you guys would like to do, or are you just kind of waiting for her to keep going? Um, I think we could probably make it to this rock and wait for her to continue to cross. How long is that rope? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a 50-foot rope, so, uh, okay. you know, it, it's it's at the edge kind of from, from where she was, you know, if it was tied off back over here, you know, she's kind of getting towards the end of it. So did you untie it before we moved? <laughs> or we leave uh, the rope in the middle? Yes, like, I, I think as you, as she reached the edge of the of the rope and we start following her on the rock, we're, we're, we're still holding the rope, but it's no longer around the tree. Right. I think we have the rope at this point, and if she has the other end going to the rock, then she might be able to pull or tie off over there. Yeah. Yeah. If this measurement's correct, that's the it's only twenty five feet to the shore. Yeah. So you, that should that should work. I mean, even with with the length that you're tying off and everything. Um, yeah, why don't all of you roll a perception check for me real quick? Okay. Uh, none of those are going to be quite enough to get advance warning on this. 
Uh, so uh, basically, I think what's happening is you all are, are paying so much attention to, to what's happening here on the ice um, that you're not watching the other shore uh, and kind of the, 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 the hill that you kind of have to go up on the other side uh, that much. Uh, until until all of you are uh, very suddenly aware of a sound that comes from the other shore, uh, where you see a, uh, a large cave lion kind of at the top. It's, it's growling and it kind of lets out a lets out a roar and kind of in a couple of bounds leaps down from from up above onto kind of this uh, protruding area and starts uh, stalking into your direction. Neat. Yes. Uh, so with that said, uh, what I need from everybody is for you to roll some initiative so we can get into a turn order so we can see how all of this plays out. Uh, so to roll initiative um, on your character sheet. Uh, sorry, I actually have to open a character sheet so I know what I'm so I'm actually saying a correct thing. Uh, there should be a button that says initiative. You should have like a number that says like 2.14 or something like that. Uh, yeah, click on that yeah, that says really initiative. Right in the middle. Yeah, it should be right next to where it says armor class and speed. Perfect. Let's roll. I think I just broke uh, a thing on the back end. Uh, roll 20, so give me just one second to reset it. <laughs> Stop breaking stuff. Cora said that it's a good thing she went first because she's ready. I love the way that you've done these maps. They're beautiful. Oh, thank you. Alright. So. Uh, the good thing is uh, at least Cora and Bello are both faster in reacting than this cave lion is. So. Uh, let's start the combat. Uh, Cora, you are going to be up first. So, uh, so to kind of explain how, how combat works, um, it happens in, in rounds. Each round in real world time is six seconds or in, in game okay. time, I should say, is six seconds. Um, uh, we, we take it in order so everything can kind of stay, uh, stay like it's happening. But, but just keep in mind, this is all, uh, you know, Combat is usually a very fast thing in, in the real world, so even though it may take us a little while to play through it, it's actually happening in-game in very quickly. Um, okay. So, on your turn in combat, uh, there's a few things you can do. Um, you can always use your- in, unless, unless you have some kind of condition, which you do not currently have, uh, that doesn't let you do this, you can always move up to your speed, which I believe your speed is 30. Um, so a, a, that's a 30 foot speed that you can move. Uh, each square is five feet to make it easy to, to understand kind of the distance here uh, between okay. everything. So you can, you can move that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, right now, the ice that you are on is difficult terrain. So that's going to make your speed slower. So that means you can move 15 feet uh, right now instead of 30. Um, you okay. could try to move the full 30, but I would have to make you do some checks to see if you can maintain your balance and keep moving and that kind of thing. Um, okay. And then you have, uh, so that's, that is one action you can always take on your move. You have a second uh, a second thing, which is actually called an action. That is the game mechanic that is called as an action. Uh, with that action, you can attack. Uh, you can uh, you can help somebody else. Uh, you can um, uh, you can take the uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, you can defend, which basically puts yourself in like a defensive stance and gets you, you know, gives you extra armor class. Basically, um, okay. you can 
you can use that action to instead of taking an, you know to, to, instead of attacking you can ready an attack which would be like waiting for something to come to you uh, on its turn uh, so there's just there's a few kind of different things you want to do so kind of tell me if you tell me what you want to try to accomplish I will tell you right now kind of what you what you can use to get to it uh, if that makes can sense. I ask you about the terrain first yes okay so, so my, I'm thinking about getting to this next big rock but I'm curious is it like a level beach type thing that I'm going towards or is that mountain lion 10 feet above me yeah so that is a very good question um, I'm going to do a little bit of drawing here on the map to see okay. just so you understand it see it clearly all right uh, so uh, this big ledge up here uh, is probably uh, 20 feet above you let's see. okay let's make that <clears throat> bigger and easier to see. Okay. Right, so that's like 20 feet up there. Um, okay. You know, kind of climbing climbing this this cliff wall. Uh, this, to get up here from the ice, which we're going to count as like basically the, you know, the, the surface level, uh, that's going right. to be uh, like a 10 foot uh, a 10 foot kind of thing. So it's it would be easy enough to kind of scale up it. You know, there's, there's kind of rubble and stuff, so you can climb it. It's just going to be it's going to take climbing up it. Basically. And the mountain lion can just jump down. It can just kind of jump down. Okay. Um, so I guess maybe I like prepare for an attack, ready an attack. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so readying your attack uh, that basically takes your your action for the turn. Uh, but when mm -hmm. uh, when the lion gets near you, uh, you can then use your attack to attack. Okay. It, basically. Uh, yeah. Perfect. I think that's a very good uh, move under this uh, situation. Okay. Are the character sheets unavailable while we're doing the turn? Uh, no, you should be able to access them. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to say is that's your turn, but if... Uh, if you happen to review your character sheet and see something on it that you're like, oh, I should use that, uh, that's fine. We can come back. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Bello, you are up next. Uh, you kind of see this. You know that Cora is like, I don't know, 10, 10 feet or so away from you. Uh, this lion is, uh, you know, a little ways, uh, but not, uh, certainly not as far as you would like it to be, about 30 feet away. Right. Um, I think I'd like to go out towards Aura. Is the like for when the lion comes out, I have numbers. Uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, since you are heading towards kind of this middle area, I do need you to make a dexterity th uh, saving throw uh, as you move out there. We like group discuss what the best choice is, or do we have to just each individually make our own choices? Uh, you can discuss some, uh, but to kind of keep things moving, it is better to to kind of you know think of this as kind of happening in real time and so you wouldn't have a lot of time other than kind of like really basic communication but uh, but especially right. since you're newer players uh, i'm totally fine with some some out of game discussion around strategy and that kind of thing not a problem okay well in the uh, middle of the river i'm nervous about this ice cracking so maybe we spread out and try to like kind of surround the mountain lion so instead of one clump target there are three targets so Bello could kind of either, either move that way or kind of this way. Yeah. yeah. What do y'all think? That's fine. I think that's smart. Which uh, which direction do you want to? I mean, I'll, I'll let you can position yourself where you want to, Bello. But. Um. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that. Boys. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of you're kind of near nearby ish. Um, do you also kind of want to ready an attack, or do you have anything else that you? I can't remember if you have. 
like a bow or any ranged kind of stuff that you want to shoot with, or or what? I think Kerchek has the bow, if I recall. Kerchek does have the bow. I have a bow as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna ready my bow. I mean, you can you can either ready it or you can actually use it now if you want to. Either either way is is fine. Is there a difference in the performance if you ready an attack and then you or you just do it? Uh, so in this case, um, because the bow is a ranged weapon, uh, if you wait for the lion <laughs> and it gets close to you, if it gets within five feet of you, then your attack would be with disadvantage because you would be okay. attacking with okay. a ranged weapon, but in melee range. Sure. So, so the further away you are, potentially the better it is to use. But so that wouldn't make less sense for Bellow, but it would make more sense for me if I'm working with a spear and a club. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I would like to go ahead and take a shot, being on like about 30 feet away. Yeah. Go ahead and roll that attack then. So just hit bow? Yes. Or... Uh, there should be kind of like right in the middle of your sheet. There should be a like an attack section. Um, no. And one of those should be bow. Like it should say bow and fire hardened spear. Bow is like bow plus five, one d six plus three piercing. Uh, it's just under where your hit dice are and the death saves. Okay. Sorry. Oh no! No problem. No, learning, learning where stuff is on the sheet. It's where was it? Oh, oh, okay. I see it right here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Twenty-three is is what you got because you have that negative one from your exhaustion. Um. Uh, so that's uh, that's great. Uh, that is definitely a hit. Uh. So, so go know, ahead. What is the like? What's the top? Like, what's a good roll? Is the top fifty or is the top twenty-five? Like. Uh, well, you're rolling a you're rolling a dice that has twenty sides on it, so a twenty plus whatever your modifier is is going to be the best. Okay. So in so in this case, the math works out because uh, you have a uh, you have a plus five to your attack. So in this case, Bellow, the best he could do would be a twenty five. Okay. Uh, te cool. Technically, as a minus one, so the best right now he could do is a twenty four. Uh, okay. So. Um, okay, so that uh, so your so your twenty three uh, hits. So go ahead and over here in chat where it says bow, click on click on the word bow, and that's gonna tell me what the damage is. Uh, so you're gonna do nine damage uh, to this thing, which is going to snarl and uh, uh, kind of hunker down to to maybe pounce off of this thing. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to do on your turn? You feel you feel like you have moved and, and taken your attack well, and I think that's I think you only have the one attack at level three, so that's probably most of what you can do. What is the damage on this? Like, what will kill it? Do we know that? You you do not specifically know that. That's kind of a hidden okay. a hidden value. Okay. Yeah, I think um, that's all I can do as far as attacking. That's probably it. All right. All right. Uh, in that case, we are going to move the turn order forward, and it is going to be uh, it is going to be the starving cave lion's turn. Uh, it is definitely oh, strange. Boy. Yeah, it is definitely strange that this is out on its own. Uh, normally, cave lions would hunt in packs. Uh, that's something that you all would would just kind of know from from life. Uh, so uh, there's definitely a reason this creature is is out on its own, and given that it's winter, it's probably that it has not had uh, probably not had a good winter thus far. Uh, it's either separated from its from its pack somehow, or uh, I don't know, something, something's going on. Uh, but either way, it is going to to snarl, uh, and it is going to. Um, it's going to come running this direction. Kind of leaping down. Uh, so, Cora, as it, as it gets next to you over here, you can go ahead and take that readied attack if you would like to. 
Yes. I would like. What do I do? Uh, so on your character sheet, you click on that attack, kind of in that middle that middle area on your sheet. Uh, whichever right, weapon you were planning on using. Okay. I'm sorry? Um, I'm looking at my weapons. One, two, six, plus three, eight, I, plus three, so I guess. Is it close enough for me to hit it with a war club? Yes, yeah, it's it's next to you there, so it's in it is in melee range. Yeah. And we're gonna do this. Uh, a 19 is definitely going to hit. So over here in chat, click on where it says War Club, and that's going to roll the damage for, for that weapon. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're going to roll... Uh, you're going to roll a 5. Uh, uh, your total for, for your main weapon attack, because you rolled a 2. Uh, but you automatically add a plus 3 to that, and then you also get from your powerful blow and your train hunter another six. Uh, so you're going to do a total of 11 points of damage. Nice. Because uh, this thing is a beast, so it does count for your uh, for your beast ability. So um, get that extra six points of damage in there. Very, very helpful right now. Uh, it was kind of, kind of headed towards uh, uh, Bellow, but your your blow kind of catches it uh, as it's as it's kind of leaping through. So he's kind of at the last minute, kind of kind of turns and is going to um, it is going to turn and attack you, uh, and it is going to have advantage on this because it's going to use its frenzied attack this turn. Um, let's see. So so it is going to try to bite at you. Uh, all right, so it rolls a 21 because it has advantage, which sure. your armor class is an 18. Uh, so it is going to beat that. Uh, and that's how we de that's how we determine whether or not it hits you or not. So um, so it beats your 18 armor class. Uh, so that is going to do 12 points of damage to you. Ooh. Uh, so to do the damage, uh, the easiest way to do the damage is if you click on your token on the on the map here. You'll okay. see there's a bunch of bubbles at the top of it. The red one is your hit points. If you just click on that and type in minus 12 in the little box that pops up, it will automatically subtract the damage from you. Well, token. Okay, so type in what? Uh, minus 12. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. Wait. Yeah. I did yeah, it right. Just, and, oh! Uh, uh, in, in the, uh, in the red one. Not the, uh, you the did it in the green one. one. There's a, there's a red one, yeah. Sorry, red is... Sorry. Here. Nope, no good. Yeah, you just, so you I just type... Pardon. Yeah, you just you just literally type minus twelve. You click hit type minus twelve. Perfect. There you go. Okay, sorry. And it does a little blood spurt off of you and and uh, sure <laughs> takes it off. Yep. Uh, perfect. I also need you to since it, it was running at you kind of here. I need you to make a strength saving throw real quick. So I hit the strength under proficiency bonus or over all the way to the left? Uh, proficiency bonus. Okay. Uh, you do make the save. So this thing, basically, its force comes at you and as it bites on you, like the whole body weight of this thing uh, slams against you. Uh, but you are able to uh, maintain your footing. It does not knock you over, uh, which is... At least a good thing. Um, I'm just going to roll real quick one dice to see if something happens or not. All right. Uh, 
right now we're good. Uh, uh, you do hear some, some creaking. You do hear some creaking from the ice under you, from the from the weight of this uh, creature near you, and just all of this commotion. But it does not break. Uh, so that is good. Uh, it is going to. Uh, uh, even though it's biting on you, uh, it's going to kind of swing over to Bello with its claw and try to claw at him. Uh, with a 23, I'm afraid that beats your armor class, which is a 13, I believe, Bello. Um, so that is going to hit you for eight points of damage. You can do that same thing if you want to, and just click on your token. Do a click on the red circle and just type minus eight. Uh, and it'll do, the, do the damage for you. We're very laggy. Yeah, unless. Yeah, no, no. Try to double click. Oh. It did something. Oh, it's something. It won't if come up. Yeah, it's okay. If it's Why it's not? being weird, I can do it for you. Not a not a problem. I got you. All right. So you you uh, catch a claw from this thing, uh, and uh, but that is going to be its turn. You now have a uh, giant cave lion uh, in your faces, basically here. Uh, Kerchek, you are up. Um. Yes. So Kerchek is going to fire. Um. His, he's fifteen feet away. So that that. That doesn't give you disadvantage on the bow and arrow, right? Correct. Yeah, you're 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 fine. Okay, then I'm gonna fire an arrow. Uh, a seven, unfortunately, is going to miss. Okay, I'm going to use my action surge. Oh yeah, yep. Do I need to click on that? Uh, little speed bubble. Let me double check your character. I don't think you. I don't. I, I mean, I know what it is. I just need to. Uh, okay. You'll just get. Uh, so what is that? Yeah, go ahead and is click it, it just so that uh, just so everybody can see what it is. Yeah. On my turn, I can take an additional action, but I can only do this once per long rest. Yeah. Yeah. If you go ahead okay. and, and just uh, there's a counter up here that says that you have one action surge, uh, if you'll mark that down to zero. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely... So, that's just a class thing, so I would have that too? Because we're the same class? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's over on Good the right know. side. Um, okay. There's a list of things, so I'm going to fire another arrow. I think that's a good plan. Uh, 16 is definitely going um, to I fired an arrow and it missed, but he has an action surge, so he's going to do another action. Okay. But then he has to do a short or long rest before he can do it again. Okay. All right. That one uh, is done. I have one, but I don't know if you have it. All right. Uh, that is going to uh, drop this creature below half health. Uh, and as it does so, it, it reacts uh, with... Uh, kind of rage and pain and desperation. Uh, and it is going to try to bite. Uh, you know, it's next to two people. I'm just going to roll a d2 uh, just to see who it bites. Uh, if it's a one, it'll be Bello. If it's a two, it's Cora. Oh, boy. Uh, it's going to try to bite Cora again. Of course it is. Uh, oh, and a 24 is going to hit. Uh, it's rolling very well. Rude! It, it rolled a 17 plus some stuff. So, uh, that's the rudest lion we've met so far. Uh, For real! That, is, oh my that God. is going to be... Oh my gosh. Uh, oh my God! Rolled... I don't like lions anymore. You know, I'm about to die on this river! You know what? That's way too much damage. I'm not sure why... It'll be a lovely For barrel. one bite! Bro, did he get me in the neck? <laughs> I see what happened. Uh, that should not be a 2d8. That should be a 1d8. Let me fix that and roll it again. 
Love that. I love that for us. <laughs> Careful. Let's try that again. Uh... A lot better. <laughs> Well, he rolled maximum damage on it. He rolled an eight, so it still is 15 points. <laughs> so uh, if it's helpful, I can just do the damage for you if uh, if you're kind of laggy. Um, no, you. I think I can do it this time. Okay. It's already up there. So I hit the 20, and then I do the minus 15? Yes. Yep. Okay. Right. Uh, but the good news, uh, Kerchek, is there anything else you want to do with your turn movement or, or anything? Yeah, actually, I would like to uh, move. I was going to move kind of over here, kind of behind um, Bella. No, Cora, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you haven't quite gotten to the center, so I'm not going to make you a dexterity save. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, you are moving to the center. Uh, that's, so go ahead and. That's, that's what I meant, so yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw, and let's just see, make sure you're able to keep your, your balance and everything out here. And nothing, nothing too bad happens. Uh, let's see, that's a 14. 14. Yeah, uh, check. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, that's, that's it then. All right. Uh, in that case, that is going to bring up Korra. Uh, this thing has taken two big bites on you. Uh, yeah, it has. Uh, your energy is, is fading <laughs> here. Uh, what would you like to do? <laughs> Can I attack? Yeah, you absolutely can. Okay, then I'm going to go with my war club because. Okay, so wait, this damage type it says one d six plus three piercing on my spear, and then one d eight plus three. So that the war club is better, right? Yes. It does more damage. Okay. Yeah, but potentially. I mean, if you roll higher, it does more damage. Yes. Sure. Okay. Oh, hi. I'm gonna try. All right. Your your twenty okay. your twenty five is definitely going to hit. Uh, so go okay. ahead and click on War Club there in the chat to roll damage. Oh come on! Please give us something good. Come on! Uh, the the good news is that was for your extra damage and not your your main. Uh, and you rolled a seven on your main damage, so you're still going to do twelve points of damage. I mean, it, it's it's not i it's not ideal that you rolled one on those d fours. Uh, but that's definitely a bunch of damage on this thing. Uh, is there anything... Less damage than he did to me. <laughs> that is true. Uh, is there anything <laughs> else you would like to do on your turn here? Um... I'm, just, I'm pulling up your character sheet just to check you. Well, I don't want to run because then that's just gonna... Then he's just gonna go for a check, and it's better if we only have one of us severely injured than just me. Yeah, um, you know, you could try. This thing is not more than two sizes bigger than you, so you could use your aggressive uh, thing with with your bonus at action, if you wanted to, and try to shove okay. this thing. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or uh, or you can use your action surge, or and you can use your action surge if you want to to hit it again. Uh, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. but that's one uh, one option. Um, but yeah. Let's do this aggressive. So do I just click on the red word? Uh, yeah, or so the, oh, the tap bubble, right? Yeah, so for a shove, uh, shoves are slightly different. Uh, basically, what I'm going to have you do. Uh, sorry, I just have to double well, check. Oh, wait, hang on. A shove isn't going to do a whole heck of a lot of damage, so maybe I do the action surge. We're kind of like, I'm about to die here, so I might as well go hard, right? Sure, yeah. The warrior. I'm going to do action surge, yeah. She wouldn't. Cora is bad. She's not gonna do. She's not gonna push it. She's gonna attack it. I'm gonna do the action. Here. All right. Uh, all right. So go ahead and roll another attack then, if you want to. Okay. One more. Come on, baby. Uh, definitely nice. a hit. It's a twenty-one. Uh, Alright, uh, not bad. You rolled uh, actually completely average on those d4s, because one was a 3 and one was a 1, so you averaged out to 2 on each of them, and then you did ten, uh, you rolled a 7 on your d8, so pretty good. Uh, 14 points of damage. Uh, that is going to be enough uh, that nice. you, you, you bury this club into it, and, and you feel bone crunch 
uh, and it slumps uh, here oh, onto God. the ice. Nice. Uh, I just need to make one... One quick roll as that happens. Of course. Sure. See if we think. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing bad happens. 17 is fine. Uh, okay. And so, I hear the smile. I don't like it. Uh, you are, you yeah. are out of combat. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. out of, you're out of combat. Uh, you are still here on the ice. Uh, Cora has taken some, some, uh, some, some damage. Her, her, her stamina is a little bit, uh, worn down by this encounter here. Um, where are we in the, like, in the day? Because did we, did we rest before this? I can't remember. No. We haven't no uh, yeah, I mean, you, you just started the day. You're, you're a couple of hours into traveling at this point. It took you about, okay. I think we said about three hours to get here to the, uh, to the river. Okay. Um, I'd like to get off this river. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we're taking this cat with us. Yes. That's, that's dinner. Yep. My thoughts exactly. Just grab it by the tail. Let's go. But y'all are going to have to drag me up this cliff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so you're, you're all right in the middle of this river. Uh, how do you want to finish crossing? Is there anywhere along the bank that is close enough that we can see that is a lower elevation to get up to the top of it? Like this area right here is your easiest way up, kind of this, okay. this spot right there. I think we had that direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes the most sense. 20 feet away. Can we just make our way that way, or do we need to roll anything to finish crossing the river? I mean, are you all, uh, are you kind of going to try single filing, or are you just all trying to get off the ice now? Like, how, how do you approach it? A mad um, I think <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going for it. <laughs> Yeah, I like One of y'all is gonna have to grab the cat. Yeah, that's fine. I think I think single file behind um, Cora. All right, uh, Cora, as Man. you as as you go, uh, roll me one more dexterity saving throw. And that's on the left uh, by side the, or the, under under the proficiency bonus. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, uh, you are able to make it over there uh, just fine. Nothing nothing happens. Pretty. And you, you kind of clamber up onto this onto this ledge here. All right, Bello, you next. All right, uh, who's who's getting this cat? <laughs> um I'm happy to drive you. If uh, you don't want to, but uh, I can drag it. Okay, I can drag the cat. Uh, I think you're closer, aren't you? Yeah. Bella? Yeah. Thank right. you. And the cat's on the way. Yeah. All right, uh, Bella. If you would, uh, first, first of all, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Let's just see kind of how how all of this goes. Uh, yeah, not a problem. You you were able to to, to move. Um, also, roll me an athletics check, and let's see if you're able to how how well you're able to drag this this lion. Oh, uh, I'll take that first roll. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, what I'm going to say is, with that, you're able to kind of get around to this side. Uh, but this thing is heavy. It's gonna, it's going to take two of you to to finish okay. pulling it off this ice. Okay. Her check is on the way. All right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and roll a dexterity check for me as you as you start kind of moving over there. Um, not great. That is not great. Uh, nine is not. Uh, let me let me check for one thing. Oh, come on! <laughs> We're the River Clan. The River can't betray us. <laughs> That's Ker a river. Ker check as you as you move around this this cave lion. Uh, and get mm. ready to try to grab onto it. Uh, you're going to slip on the ice and kind of <laughs> kind of fall, 
and you're going to catch yourself kind of on top of this lion. Uh, but there okay. is going to be a sickening crack. Uh, this is ah. this is this is the uh, kind of the, uh, the 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 straw that broke the river's back, if if you will. Um, it was just I, I broke a rib, but it's the ice. Yes, uh, and you are going to uh, you are going to hear this ice breaking, uh, and uh, the kind of all all around this cave lion, it's, it's just going to kind of crack, and the the pelt is or the the body is going to kind of start falling through, and you are holding yourself up on it. Uh, mm-hmm. So you will you will get ready to fall in. Uh, so what I'm going to do? To fall. Yeah, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to roll back into initiative just so we can kind of sort how how this plays out, uh, kind of taking everything okay. in turns. Do we all hit the initiative button? Uh, yes. Okay. Why is it so much lower than me? That's because I'm half dead. Does the river roll also? <laughs> uh, the re- <laughs> river will, will act uh, as rounds end. Um, okay. So, Kerchek, uh, let's see. Uh, Cora, you would be the first one to be able to react in this situation. Uh, probably because Kerchek is actually falling. Uh, Bello was already just more focused on like trying to pull this this thing. Uh, you're just kind of watching it all. Is there anything <laughs> you would like to try to do in this situation? Um, I can I throw him the rope? Uh, you can you can definitely throw and he can try to catch it on his on his turn. So you can throw it in his direction. Uh, and yeah, there, there would the be a rope that way. Okay. Uh, roll an athletics check and let's kind of see how well you are able to brace yourself uh, on your end. Uh, Sorry, I can find it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you feel like you've embraced. We'll see if that's if an eight is enough to uh, to work. If if this goes, um, all right. Uh, that is going to bring up uh, Kerchek. Uh, you are you are falling. Uh, a rope has been thrown in your direction. Uh, you can you can feel uh, the ice is just uh, you know the icy water as the cave line is slipping into it. Uh, you're going to go if you cannot. Maybe grab hold of this rope, or grab hold hold of Bello, or or something. Uh, what do you want to do? So I have a question. Mm-hmm. Where's the other end of the rope? <laughs> uh, I mean, Cora Cora is holding on to it. Okay, so she had that. So she had like the whole rope when she threw I, it. I think that's what we're. I think that's what we're saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I was because okay. I was going across the river, and then we were gonna. Right, you threw your weapon there. You used, right. your, you used the rope to throw your weapon, so you had it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have the other end as well. But like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, what do I need to roll to try to catch the rope? Uh, go ahead. You can roll. Um, I'm going to say that this would be... Uh, this is either going to be athletics okay. uh, or sleight of hand. I'll go with athletics. Oh dear! Oh no! You you miss oh. the rope. Avenge me! So it. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so you are I'm you are. <laughs> you are going to fall into the water. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. He's gonna die then. It's so cold. So the yeah, good news. Is <laughs> yeah, the good news is that I mean there is a there is a lion. Under you, so, so you might not f- sink quite as quickly, and there may be more chances to get you out. Okay. Uh, but just going into the water, uh, you are instantly going to take two points of cold damage okay. from the water. Uh, uh, 
fellow. Uh, you're, you, you've been holding onto this cave lion. It is, like, you, you basically have, like, a paw at this point as, like, the rest of it has, like, sunk in. If you keep holding on, it's probably going to pull you into the water with it. Uh, Kerchek also has gone into the water next to you. Uh, this also means that the the ice you are on is now right next to ice that does not exist, which means it is much more likely to also fail in the uh, short term here. What would you like to do? Okay. Um, one second. Let me... Um... Could I pull out my rope and uh, toss it to him since we're right beside each other? Yeah. And I... then, then make a break for the rocks? Yes. Yeah, I would say you could I would say you could definitely try to do that. Um, oh. And I think or you're close me. enough you can... Yeah. Could you tie the rope around the cat's paw and I hold onto the cat and you... <laughs> yeah, that's a good that idea, would, actually. That way no one's throwing a rope at me again. <laughs> how, how strong is Bello, though? How am I good Is Bello going to be able to hold both of you? Well, if I can get, make it to you, we can both pull, right? We've only been gone a couple hours. We're not dying for food right now. But this is food we already have. But it's food or clan made. I mean, you do... I, I'm a, I'm not saying it's so much as food right now, except it's the thing that I'm on top of. He's holding yeah. on to the... Maybe him from sinking, maybe you can save me from sinking. Although, you are a bit of a question mark. For what? Oh. Great thing. Also, I'm hungry, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, I like tying it around the the lion really quick. Okay. And then making a break for the rocks. Okay. Roll uh, roll me a dexterity saving throw to see if you're able to get away from here safely. Since the ice is all breaking, this is going to just kind of... Yeah, uh, no, no problem. You're able to, to get over by Korra. Uh, so also roll me an athletics check with advantage. Uh, since Cora can kind of help you up here to hold on to the rope. Um, all right, so that's going to be a 15. All right. So that's, that's much better. Uh, all right, Cora, is there anything other than kind of assisting with this rope that you want to try to do on your turn? Um, I don't think so. All right. Uh, in that case... Uh, Kerchek, um, you are you are in the water. Uh, you're yes. holding onto this lion. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is currently with a 15. Uh, it is not sinking any further, but you are still in the water. Do you hold onto the lion, or are you trying to scrabble out of this? Like, what what is your plan right now? Are you going to grab I... the rope? Yes. So my like if I if I can I'm kind of seeing it as like I'm holding on to the lion and then pulling myself using um basically holding onto the lion so I can grab onto the rope using it as the thing that I am on to help reach like like a ladder <laughs> mm -hmm. you know um so going for the rope because that is actually what's going to get me out of here. And if we lose the lion, fine. I'm not trying to save the lion at this point. I'm just trying to stay out of the water. Yeah. Or get out of the water. Uh, go ahead then and make an athletics check and let's see if you can get out of the water, kind of laddering your way out <laughs> with the lion. Not really. Lion corpse. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd say with a nine, uh, the the shock of the water has like you're you're trying but yeah you you almost more just kind of like get caught up with it like it's it's in the water and there's there's ice pieces and you know it's kind of it's yeah. chaotic and and you're not you're not quite uh quite able to get out uh you're going to take some more uh some more damage for being in the water more or does it uh you're going to take four more points of damage okay. Yikes. 
All right, uh, Bello, give me another athletics check. I will give you advantage on this uh, because Cora is helping with this. We're gonna see if you can pull this thing out of me. 16, uh, yeah, uh, you, you start pulling this, this lion uh, between the two of you. Um, you are pulling it up out of the water, uh, out of the water. Um, and so, uh, what I'm going to say is, we're, we'll unless Corey, unless there's something you want to add to that, uh, check. We're going to see if you can hold on to this lion as it gets pulled out, basically. Okay. Unless I can add strength, I mean, doing what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know you got that 16 on the athletics because you're because you're willing to help. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kerchek, go ahead and roll another athletics check, and let's see if you're able to... All right. Uh, this time you are able to to hold on, uh, and the and lion death. the lion and Kerchek are pulled out of the water. Uh, I'm just going to do one more... one more check. Oh, I'm again. <laughs> <laughs> Type it right; it helps. Uh, yes, you're you're able to uh, you're able to pull this lion kind of safely to the to the edge of the shore, uh, and Kerchik, you'll be able to to kind of scramble up yes. and out uh, onto the onto this cliffside. Uh, not too much worse for wear, but you are going to take another level of exhaustion from falling into the river. Uh, sure. So I will I will get that set up on your sheet here. Seems fair. So turn that into a negative to you. Uh, the sheet is not specifically designed for this, so I kind of have to do the exhaustion in a manual sort of way. There's not an automated way to do it, so I have to change it in like three places. So there. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, but with all that said, you are you have safely crossed the river. Uh, you are you are on the other side, uh, and uh, you you have a uh, slightly emaciated but full cave lion uh, that you can do stuff with. So is it turns or is it open for them? Uh, we are we are back open. Uh, combat and turn over turn, turn order are done. So can we try to build a fire on this little ledge that we have? Uh, yeah, you can either do it here on the ledge, or if you want to try to get up, you know, you, it, you could you could take a few minutes, climb up, and uh, you know, try to get out of the wind a little bit more. You know, what is the some... level of my damage? Like, am I profusely bleeding out, or am I like sustained? Yeah. So so the. So the way the damage works in here, it's it really is kind of a um, more a sense of like your your stamina that you have for the day to keep moving. So you haven't taken okay. any like lethal blows or anything like that. Uh, this is more like okay. when when the when the lion tried to bite at you, it was like you were fighting it off, but it, that wore off your stamina, right? So okay. Um, so you you still you still are able to act fully, uh, but but you're running out of energy to keep going for the day. Okay. Um. Well, do you guys want to build a fire here, or do you want to try to go up? Um, going up makes sense to me. If if we are in the wind here, if we can find maybe somewhere on top that's maybe a little more um, protected from the the elements, um, it's not just on a rock. We can maybe you know set up camp and rest for the night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you absolutely can do that. Um, like this area gonna... looks good to me, Lauren. Oh, I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make you roll for it. I, I, th I think you all have the, the skills and ability to make this happen. Um, so uh, after your your harrowing experience there... Uh, so yeah, you're you're able to, <laughs> yeah. Um, you would you would definitely be able to uh, to rest for uh, the night. Now, there's two kinds of rest you can take. You can either take a a long rest or a short rest. 
A short rest mm-hmm. is half an hour to an hour or something like that. It's kind of, you know, patch yourself up, uh, kind of get, uh, you know, just get get to, to feeling better. It's not going to get rid of any levels of exhaustion, but you can spend some of your hit die to regain some of your stamina points, uh, if you would like to. Um, it's not going to give you your action surges back, uh, right. but it's going to take less time. So yeah. long rest is going to take, like, it's it's kind of taking enough time to, to make camp, rest, get some get some sleep, all of that <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, so... Where uh, do I see what my exhaustion level is currently? Uh, you... I don't think you have an exhaustion level yet. Um, but there should be, like, a little counter kind of to the right of everything. Uh, right, okay. There should be two buttons that say, like, short rest and long rest, and under that, one of them says exhaustion. And you are currently okay. at zero. Okay. And my current hit points isn't populating. Oh, that's... that's true. Let me see what's going on with that. Oh, it deleted from here. Uh, I do not remember what you had. Uh, did you have... It was low. I think it was five. Yeah. I, I was going to say it was either five or six. I will, I will say six. It was five. Okay. All right. Five it is. So how do I regain those? All right. Well, it depends if you want to take a long rest or a short rest. Um, so uh, which which sounds better to you all right now? I mean, obviously, there is a little bit of a sensitive situation where you were trying to find uh, find the girl. But also, you know, is this one of those situations where uh, you have to take care of yourselves first? Right. Like, so, so and are we going to go ahead and cook a cat or are we dragging this thing with uh, us? Yeah, yeah, we're not going to drag that with us. Yeah, you could do that during a long rest. You would be able to, to, to deal with it during a long rest, but you would not have enough time in a short rest to, to do anything with it. But then we're, little old Ira is out there freezing to death. Yeah, it's basically it's moving time forward like eight hours. <laughs> which is going to put you into night time. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you guys think? Is it worth it? Let's do a short rest, and we can maybe get a, you can get a few of your hit points back. Um, that doesn't you said that doesn't change our exhaustion levels, Lauren. It would not change your exhaustion levels. Uh, a long rest Let's is only do. going to reduce them by one. So, um, does okay. dragging the cat with us take anything away from us? It's going to if slow you down considerably. Go ahead and it now. Yeah, it would it would it would slow you down considerably to drag it with you. Can we like cut it up and get what we need out of it? for like meat and then uh yeah yeah i mean you certainly could that would uh, what i would say is that would take a little bit longer uh and it it just wouldn't be part of the rest it would just add a little bit of extra time but you could definitely do that you do have like five days of rations with you so it's not necessarily okay essential to take this meat but i mean maybe it is i take a souvenir tooth yeah (laughs) (laughs) that works (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is also very frozen and cold out here. You know, if you pack it in snow, maybe maybe you could come back for it on the way Ooh. back. Yeah, yeah. Love that for us. That's a great idea. Nice before we have yeah. to cross the river again. If something else doesn't find it first. Oh God! That's, but then are we setting a trap for ourselves? Yeah, I mean, some other predator, some other predator could come along and and find it. But you know, if, if they don't, then then, yeah, then you have a. All right. For the sake of expediency, a little bit, um, what I'm going to say is, you get back uh, back out into the forest, and after after kind of taking a few minutes to rest, and you are able to uh, to start looking again for uh, for the young girl who has gone missing, and start following the clues to find her. Um, How is the current weather? Uh, still, still full on blizzard. Uh, nothing has changed in that regard. The weather, the weather does not seem to be breaking. Um, so, uh, well, I'd like to check for some, for any kind of signs of her coming this way, whether it's yeah. footprints or broken branches. Is that survival? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and roll a survival check. Yeah. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, here on the other side of the river, as as you kind of 
head uh, head and search for her, um, you're going to see some more signs of her. In fact, you find um, it looks like she definitely remembered some of her uh, some of her skills that she was taught, and has actually marked a couple of things to show you. Because I think she realized by the time she got this far that you know, uh, kind of dangerous to be out. Maybe maybe the maybe the blizzard had not hit by the time she left as as hard, but it was getting much worse. Uh, so she's actually marked a couple of things to show you kind of where she was headed. So it's actually easier to follow her at this point. Um, uh, other, yeah, other than the weather that continues. So uh, if you could all give me one more constitution saving throw, we'll just see if any of you take any more exhaustion uh, as you keep tracking her, but that, that 17 is going to be enough um, to get you to her. Uh, you all uh, actually Kerchek. Um, what, you what, were, what? yeah, yeah. You're going to take another level of exhaustion. Uh, you know, which makes sense. I think you're. Uh, I mean, yeah. you did you did take a rest and you warmed up some, wet. but you yeah, but your clothes are still wet, and uh, even though you tried to to dry out as much as possible, uh, yeah. so you're going to take another level of exhaustion. So let me set those. I mean, so it's not a difference I, between stamina and. Is damage even a thing, or is stamina right. the only real thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in classic D and D, you would have hit points, which equate more to actual uh, damage. I reading but, about that. Yeah, but it kind of didn't make. Uh, it's, it doesn't really make sense in D&D &D <laughs> when, when you really start analyzing it, but in a, in a setting where, that is as dangerous as this and where injury can really could really have lasting effects, it really didn't make sense to have everything be actual damage that you were taking. Uh, so yeah. kind of trying to, to pull that back a little bit. Um, so... Uh, all right, so that's really the only the only thing is that Kerchek takes that extra, uh, that extra. Uh, but you are able to uh, to continue on. All right, uh, as you uh, progress along, um, and as as it gets a little later in the day here, kind of you know it's winter, so so darkness comes a little early. So you're kind of and with the with the blizzard, it's already uh, you're already kind of uh, in in not great visibility to begin with uh kind of the darkness is is going to to settle in and you're going to kind of get that weird uh glowy you know slightly glowy white world that that snow does but just kind of encapsulates you in a, in a bubble around you um and uh kind of over the sounds of the of the wind and storm that are going um you are going to hear the echoes of wolves crying off in the distance uh, and as you uh, as you keep following the the marks that uh, that uh, Kyra left for you, um, the the howls will grow louder, uh, and eventually you are going to come out near a cave. Uh, uh, this cave, uh, you actually can see inside the cave, kind of, kind of huddled, uh, up kind of on a, on a, on a rocky ledge. Uh, you actually see, uh, Ira, uh, uh, there, she's kind of, kind of huddled back in there, uh, kind of around the base of this cave, uh, kind of, kind of watching her and howling and, uh, paying attention to her, uh, there are four wolves, uh, kind of pacing. Uh, one of them is kind of, you know, trying to scrabble up there, but just can't quite get up there. And, uh, you can see that she has a stick in her hand and like, if they, if they try to get close, she's kind of like, like hitting them with it, uh, and kind of knocking them back down. Uh, you do not know how long she has been here. Uh, but that is the situation <laughs> that you approach into. 
Uh, right now, because the wolves have other prey, you have not been noticed. And you can kind of choose... Um, what I'll do is I'll actually kind of set you... Like, maybe you're kind of coming in from above a little bit. Uh, you can either... You can figure out how you want to approach this and kind of deal with this. Uh, now, what I will say about these wolves. These are... Uh, these are prehistoric wolves. These are not the wolves that we have. Uh, we, we would call them dire wolves, right? They are, they are extra large. Uh, uh, I don't think they quite qualify as megafauna, but they are, they are, they are bigger. <laughs> so I, I like the idea of throwing the rations down to distract them, but um, I don't know how that would work. Like, so this this cave, Lauren, could we conceivably get above uh, Ira? Like, yeah. straight up. Could we get, get above her and drop a rope down to her to hoist her up? Or is there like a lip there where we can't get into that? Um, so she's kind of back in, so you would have to... Like, she would maybe kind of have to make a little run for it, uh, is maybe the best way I can say that. Um, That's reasonable. Maybe we throw the rations distract them while like maybe we divide and conquer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe Kerchak you go up and lower a rope for her okay because I mean a rope isn't going to be that much of a distraction or a problem for the wolves oh, we're 40 up there. Yeah. but yeah, she'll wolf. see it and then I'm we distract seeing... yeah I'm not seeing a path from down below to up here uh, what I would say is there's probably one just kind of hidden by these trees that are in the front. So, you know, you okay. could uh, you could definitely make your way down, you know, somewhere around um, here if you wanted to. Or you could cross over and come, you know, come around this way as well. I'm, uh, I'm more concerned about the wolves back. coming up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's, enough, there's enough space for them. You know, they could clamber up if they wanted to. Well, then, Cora, why don't you drop the rope? Because Bello and I both have bows and arrows, so we can shoot at the wolves from up here if we that need makes to. Sense. Okay. Um, so if you want to get in position above Kira, and okay. then one of us can throw rations. Uh, how I don't know how far can we throw. That's a, like, I mean, you'll you'll make a check for it to see how how it goes. Okay, sure. We just really because it doesn't need to go all the way down here. It just needs to go to where they're no longer paying attention to to her, right? Yeah. So yeah, if okay, we could, so yeah, I go up to the top as close to above Ira as I can get. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, yeah, you can just move. Right now, we're not in any kind of combat, so you can just move to wherever you would like to get to. Okay. So I just kind of, like, drag. That look good to you guys? Yep. Okay. Um, I will throw rations? How would, what kind of roll is that, Lauren? Uh for your uh right. it would it would be a um i'm gonna say it's an athletics check okay. uh with a nine uh where were you trying to aim um like here <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. What I'm going to say well, if with. If I say here, what I'll just. Like, I only throw it halfway. <laughs> that's, that's better. <laughs> uh, with, a, with a nine, what I'm going to say is. Um, it's, not, it's not like you fumble it or anything. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them do a little perception check. Uh, they don't even see them. Well, they have advantage on anything that that pertains to smell, so the likelihood of them seeing this, uh, you know what? It's a nine. Uh, I 
think with a nine, they do not see it. Uh, is is what happens off of your off of your roll. Uh, oh, so man. you. So you do kind of land it here, but they are so intense, uh, intent on what is happening with Ira that they do not notice kind of the, the, the ration that you threw out. Which, I mean, to be fair, it's like some dried jerky-style thing. So it's, you know, certainly not as appetizing as the uh, the fresh uh, opportunity that is there. Yeah. <laughs> fresh edible child that is there. Can one of you shoot an arrow to... Maybe the action of that would... I don't know that they're going to notice the food from the arrow, though. I mean, we could... Well, no, but I mean, even you know, from we'll... the food, just like, wait, what's over there? Right? Wait, can I go ahead and drop the rope? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think maybe we lower the rope because that's... It's got to be in place before... Yeah so that she's able to make a run for it and it's already there for her. So is that something that I, like, do I roll in athletics for that, or...? Uh, you know, you can just you can just drop the rope. Um, uh, let me roll... Uh, let me roll a perception for Ira and see if she notices it or not, or if you're going to have to get her attention. Because okay. she's, uh... She is very focused on some wolves right now. Well, sure. Oh, this is just a perception check. Ah, uh, she notices the rope. Uh, yep. Uh, so she's going to kind of have to make a little break for it here if. Uh, yeah. Saying that she's not going to be able to reach the rope. Uh, well, I mean, we'll find out. Let's see. So she is she's up first here in the turn order. So let's see. Uh, let's see how she does. All right. Uh, where's her character? All right. Uh, what I'm going to have her do is just roll an athletics check, and let's see. If she can get a hold of this thing and do anything with it. I mean, the girl is rolling well. Uh, so, what I'm going to say is she is definitely able to grab hold of this rope. She's able to kind of jump up and grab hold of it. Uh, and with I mean, with that roll, I mean, she rolled literally as well as she could. Uh, she's even going to start climbing up this thing. Um, she's not going to make it all the way up because it's a difficult terrain. So she's kind of hanging a couple, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 feet, something like that, below the below the lip of this this cave. Uh, but she is climbing up, uh, right which is going to bring we us. Haven't distracted the wolves. But yeah, the the, the Ella wolves are, and are on the other side of the cave, and it's just me. Correct. Okay. Yep, uh, and the wolves are very aware that she is climbing up out of this thing and getting away. Like they're they're jumping around and like nipping at her. You know, well, trying to. She's much further away now. Uh, you are up, Cora. Okay, so I, yeah, I'm reeling her in. I'm trying to pull her up. I'm trying to get her to me as fast as I can. Roll an athletics check. I mean, this is this is the time to get those good rules in. So, uh, yeah, you're able to <laughs> you're able to haul her up uh, hey. and pull her up. You you now have uh, you have acquired one small child. <laughs> um, Fabulous. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good at that. <laughs> um, uh, that is your action. Are Do you want to? Well, I mean, they are they are kind of. I mean, they're down here. They'll they'll get their turns shortly. Um, is there anything you would like to do uh, at this point? Um, like start heading back. Start heading towards the guys. Yeah, like okay. get us all together. 
yeah, I, I would say that um, with with kind of Ira in tow, you're kind of able to get it just a little bit this direction. Uh, you're not able to because you're kind of pulling her with I would with with that athletics roll. So that's uh, and your. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, that's going to bring us to Bello. Uh, you see the wolves uh, looking around, uh, you know, sniffing on the air, like they definitely saw where where she went, and they are now. Uh, you know, trying to trying to figure out what has happened to their prey. Maybe this is the moment for the ration. Maybe we just went too early. They already had rations, and now they don't. <coughs> so, um, checking my backpack for anything. Man. So we're gonna have to create some sort of diversion. Uh, I guess I will I will try to throw some rations. Um yeah. this direction. Okay, kind of like into where they were already looking a little bit, like more into the cave a little. More into the cave, so we have a chance to go this direction. Okay, uh, roll an athletics check. Okay. All right, uh, sixteen. Uh, you are able to to get it pretty much exactly where you aimed. Um, is there anything else you want to do on your turn here? And we'll see how the, the the wolves are up next, basically. So we'll find out how they react to that. Um. Yeah, I'll stay here. Okay. Let's see. Dire Wolf number four. God. <laughs> uh, let's have him roll some perception. We'll have advantage on this. All right. Well, the good news is he has not noticed anybody else. Uh, the bad news is he also does not notice the rations. Uh, but uh, with that, like he also he is just trying to kind of like clamber up this way, kind of like where uh, Ira climbed. He has not figured out that he needs to do something else. Uh, so so it's not not the worst case scenario. Uh, let's see. Uh, this dire wolf. What I do for a dead lion right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright. He is going Yeah, he is going to notice the rations and he is going to kind of turn around and grab them. Uh and chomp down on on kind of this jerky type stuff. I'm going to roll a second check to see if he notices anybody else or if he's too distracted. We're so far above him. No, come on. Uh, Bello, here's what I'm going to say. Will you roll me a stealth check? Yep. And let's see how 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 that throw went. You're trying to beat a 16. Oh, yeah. All right. So you look around because this this wolf looks around, but he does not spot the source of where this food came from. And so he goes back to to eating it for a moment. Uh, Dire Wolf 2 is going to see the Dire Wolf 1... Yeah. is eating something. Oh. Uh, he's going to go over there and like try to tear at some of this this food as well. Uh, Kerchek, you are up. Okay, so this is... This is not playing out at all the way I thought it would, and it's fascinating me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, it's like, not playing out any of the ways I had 
thought either, okay, which is we're the beauty have to of have DD. Notes afterwards and have a conversation about what you were expecting. Well, I think expectation was like a fight, but at this point, I, I don't want Kerchek to do anything. Like, mm. if the wolves haven't noticed us, it doesn't make sense to start shooting at them and alert them to your our placement. Is there yeah. anything I can do to move uh, Cora and Ira along in their journey? Uh, there's, I mean, there's. I don't think there's anything you can do to, to help them at this point, uh, other than you know, other than hope that they don't get noticed. Um, you know, you can you can try to slip into hiding so that you don't draw attention or something like that. But I mean, the 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 downside to that is you might also you know create a noise or something as you are trying. I will to just I will just have to ready in action. Okay. Basically, like if. Uh, what, what is the action that you want to do? But, uh, I'm going to uh, draw my bow and arrow. Like I want to be, if, if the wolves spot us or spot any, I want to be able to respond quickly. Fair enough. All right. Uh, well, that's going to bring us then to direwolf number one. All right. Uh, I'm going to say he has disadvantage on this check now because there's so much other action here, so which basically means it's a straight check because normally he, he would have advantage, so they, they cancel each other out. One to us. That is an 11. Uh, and so with an 11, I think he is going to be also distracted by this ration. So the only one who's <laughs> right now who is still kind of on Iris scent is direwolf number four. Uh, Ira is going to come up in the turn order again. Uh, she's kind of moving along with Cora. <sighs> she is going to use the run. Okay, she has a couple of cool things that she can do. Uh, she can take the dash action as a bonus action on her turn, which gives her extra movement. So she is going to book it ahead of everybody. And uh, let me figure out how far that was. Uh, Love that for us. And just try to try to get away from the wolf. She's not thinking particularly, uh, so she can get over there with the dash action as free movement. But is um, she going to be reckless with that? Well, what she can do next is she also has uh, this hide feature, um, which means she can attempt to hide. Which basically. We're going to roll stealth and she gets advantage on this. She's going to just like try to duck into some of these bushes and stuff over here and try to confuse these confuse these guys. And she gets a 14 on that. So four, 14, not bad. Not bad. Cora, that's going to bring you up. Okay. So what do I do? Well... Well, how how do you want to move? If you're if you're just if you are running, if you are trying to be quiet and yeah, stealthy, we're leaving. I think right. we're trying. Well, that's a good point. Stealthy, because one is still on our scent. We don't want him to turn around, and then everybody will follow him. I stealthily move towards Bello and Kerchak. Okay, roll a stealth check for me. Okay. All right, uh, you definitely move over that way, and we'll see if if any of the wolves notice you or anything uh, as their turns come up. Uh, but you get 30, 30 points of movement, so you're moving over this way, so you can get kind of kind of roughly over to there. Uh, anything else you would like to do with your turn? Um, anything that I can to be like sneaky and stealthy. Um, Hiding I'm just I'm double checking your character sheet here to see if you've got anything because you already rolled stealth but let's see if you have anything on here um, not really because it's not really yeah my strong too nope uh, stealth is not is not really what you were built around so uh, so we will just see. Uh, we will just see what happens. Um, okay. I mean, you can ready an attack if if a wolf gets up here or something. You can sure. hit yeah. them. We can yeah. ready an we can ready an attack, but I mean, 
got yeah. a club and a spear, so I mean, we're not gonna do anything yeah. crazy, but yeah, I mean, yeah, ready and attack, but that's all I got. Yep. All right. Uh, Bello, that's going to bring you up. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, you would you would assume that they are. I mean, you have probably seen a dire wolf pack like take down a cave lion before. Um, so, I mean, individually, the lion might win, but like as a pack, these are. You know, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like they're they're individual bites and that kind of thing. Maybe not uh, as strong as like a cave lion bite, but like when they're attacking as a pack, like that gets that's when they're dangerous. Uh, I would say something else you would probably know just from from being uh, a person in this world. Uh, I mean, you have thrown a ration down there. Uh, I mean, that's certainly not enough for all four of these wolves to share. Uh, so at some point, they are going to be looking for prey again uh, and yeah. if they catch your scent you know that you cannot outrun a wolf right okay. it's all of the rations and go back to the lion how do things we do uh, I'm over here like thinking about being risky um, what is risky I've got the sneak attack thing that I could use Oh on, god, four wolves on yourself? I don't on think this so, no. one wolf that's not distracted um, But everybody's gonna pay attention to attack one wolf You gotta just make a choice, man Six seconds, right? <laughs> what are your thoughts, Kerchuk? Um, yeah, that's actually that, that's what's prevented me from attacking what is the fear that we shoot one wolf, all the other yeah. wolves. Either they'll pay attention to that wolf, or they'll look <laughs> around and go, "What just hurt that wolf?" Right. Um, right now, I'm kind of for walking backwards <laughs> away from the cave. Okay. And and seeing if you know we just get away, and the wolves are just confused as to why their food vanished. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Okay. It could happen. Food just floated away. Yeah, like it was right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think my my move then would just be to great. Yeah, All right, go ahead and go ahead and roll a stealth check, and let's just see. We'll get we'll get everybody's uh, stealth here to see where we're, where we're at. Everyone run stealth check or just him. I uh, just, uh, yeah, just, just bellow since it's his turn. Yeah, uh, you, you can move pretty quietly, so. <sighs> All right, uh, this dire wolf, this is the only one that has not been distracted yet by the food. So it's going to roll one more time and let's see. Uh, It is going to not be aware of Bello. It is not even going to be aware. Let's see, what did Ira roll? Uh, she had a nine. No, not a nineteen. That's too high. Uh, she has s somewhere in here. I've lost. Anyhow, uh, she rolled a stealth check. There it is. Uh, she rolled a. 14 because she had advantage um yeah it's gonna it's gonna kind of roughly know where ira went to and it's gonna kind of climb down off of these rocks uh and it is going to kind of start moving over this way kind of loping and it will take the dash action knowing that she's kind of up this way and it's going to kind of start trying to clamber up this hill it 
doesn't necessarily know other people are up here yet. I mean, you, you don't know necessarily, but it is definitely trying to get this way. The others have not caught on yet. They are still, I'm going to say they're still kind of fighting over the scraps over here. Um, let me actually roll a strength check for these two and let's see if either one of them uh, if either one of them uh, Dire Wolf 3, which is this bottom one, is going to like pull the uh, pull the ration out of the jaws of the other one. Uh, like they're kind of biting each other and like trying to, to eat at this food. Uh, Kerchek, you have a ready to action before your turn starts. Yeah. Seeing the wolf coming this way, would that have would that have triggered your your ready to action? It well, is a little seen. bit separated from the pack, so it might not it might not draw the attention of the others. What does this slope look like? Is this something that's done? What kind of challenge is it for this wolf to come up this slope? So it's going to be difficult terrain, basically. It's like it's not a path. It's it's you know it's kind of a rocky thing, but you know so it's going to have to kind of climb up it. So it's it's difficult terrain. It's going to move at half speed to get up there. But if that mountain lion nearly killed us, yeah, um, I'm going to um, no, I will not use my my ready to action. Okay, I'm going to try to. Um, I'm gonna try to like slink away, like. Yeah, bro. Let's stealth check. Like, yeah. I don't recall stealth being one of my strongest suits. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, maybe. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I mean, let's see this. What this dire wolf does. I mean, that's like I rolled a two, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not strong. Uh, <laughs> but even with a six, like I think this one is also going to like perk up and like turn and start looking, looking up. Um, it maybe can't it see you. But looking up. Yeah, like it, it, and I think it's gonna kind of like walk away, and it's like like sniffing, and like it has maybe caught something on the air, um, and it's kind of kind of possible. yeah, because it, it, it can't necessarily see up there, but it can definitely tell there's <laughs> something. How far do we have to get? How far do we have to get to escape this encounter? Will they chase us off this map? Uh, I mean, I would say. I would say that's a meta game. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say that's a meta game question, but uh, possibly depending on how you get off the map. I mean, really, I'm I'm just looking for you to try to get basically off the edge, and then we can then we can kind of go out of out of this to see if they keep following you or not. If you can shake them, um, but I mean, if they if they all aggro onto you before you clear, then yeah. they're yeah they're they're going to keep chasing you. Okay, so I've moved, but I can. I still have an action. Um, I'm gonna. I want to throw another ration. Okay, roll in athletics. The athletics. Yep. Uh, yeah. Where are you trying to kind of get it? I, I think you can, um, within you know within range you can basically land it where you want to with that. Here. Okay. Yeah, this area. All right. There's another ration down. Um, uh, Ira is basically going to to move. She she is able to get off the map this time, and she's going to hide as much as possible. Um, so she has a 17 for her stealth. So she is she is trying to get away. Uh, Cora, that is going to bring you up. I mean, I'm trying to get off the map. I'm trying to get away from these wolves. What is that, stealth? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a stealth. Uh, 
Uh, I think you're basically able to get over to the edge of the map if you want to with that. I got you. Alright. Uh, Bello? I am going to make a break for it as well. Uh, I've got the cunning action where I can do a dash or high bonus action. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely use that and I'll give you advantage on your stealth check. Okay. Uh, 12, uh, 11. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're definitely able to, to, to move over to basically to the edge of the map uh, and we'll, we'll see how... How your stealth compares to the ration that just got thrown. Um, All right. Uh, this wolf is aware of you, but it is also aware of this ration. And so what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it make a wisdom saving throw and we're going to see which direction it goes towards. Okay. Uh, with the seven, I think the ration is enough to like pull it back in this direction. It's not, it's not thinking bigger prey. It's thinking what's the easiest thing. Um, so the distraction of the ration is going to pull it over here. Uh, yes. And it's it's going to grab a hold of that. Um, I'm going to say these two dire wolves are. I will I will rule a perception for them, uh, with disadvantage. Um, dire wolf two. Uh, I think they're still fighting over the other one, but it's aware there's another ration on the field, potentially. Kerchek, this is your chance to get out of here potentially. This is. Kerchek's chance to get out of here, potentially. What do I roll to get out uh, of here, ro potentially? Roll, roll one more stealth check. This okay. is this is for all the bananas right here. Alright, that is a seven. I'm so tired, you guys. Just so tired. <laughs> All right, Dire Wolf One. This is this is who it all comes down to. I I mean, you're able to get to the edge of the map, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but it's whether the wolves are going to follow you. Let's yeah. see if Dire Wolf One oh. is aware of you right now. Definitely aware of you with a twenty. Oh, I thought it got six. Yeah, but we're gonna, they have advantage. Uh, but we're gonna have him make a wisdom saving throw, and we're gonna see if he goes after the ration, or if he's going to come chasing after prey. Oh, that was on. Sorry, I was clicked on the wrong. Let me do that again. That is an eight. He is going to stay on the ration. You are all able to slip away. Even though the wolves are aware of you, you have distracted them enough by providing other food that you are able to at least get a good head start on them and out into the wilderness. Yay! We survived! Uh, and, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to say is, uh, because, because of where we are with time uh, and stuff, uh, I, think, I think we will say that you are able to uh, because you do have the cave lion back by the river, right? That's that's probably uh, that's probably the thing that's going to help you the most. Because at some point, uh, as you are as you are slipping th back through the forest, you are going to hear howls of wolves and things uh, tracking you again. Uh, you know they've picked up their scent. Those rations did not keep them forever. Um, and as you come back into sight of the river, uh, you can actually start seeing the wolves behind you. They've they've caught up. Um, but a mad dash to, to kind of uncover the cave lion carcass. Uh, uh, you're able to kind of pull it out and uh, start crossing the river. The, the wolves, with, the, with the, the smell of the blood of the, of the, the carcass, and not really wanting to cross, uh, cross the ice uh, as well, uh, they are uh, distracted and do not keep following you. 
uh, and you are able to take Ira back across, and the rest of your journey back to the cave is fairly uneventful, other than other than the blizzard. Um, I would say you are able to uh, return back to the safety of the clan. Uh, uh, certainly with a few more levels of exhaustion by the time you get back. Uh, certainly uh, with an incredibly tired Ira. But, uh, but safe and largely sound. Uh, a couple of close encounters, some, some, maybe some slight frostbite on a couple of extremities, but overall, uh, uh, you, you arrive back safely. Um, and, uh, I think with that, uh, the, uh, kind of back in the, in the glow of the, of your campfire as the, as the, uh, the cold snow, uh, outside blows, but, but inside, uh, you warm yourselves and, and tell of your adventure. Um, uh, Ira is going to pull out of her pack, uh, that, that she has with her. Um, several small kind of dark, uh, almost black blossoms, uh, of, of flowers. Um, and, uh, she is going to, uh, to take them, uh, to, to the, uh, uh, to the healer here for the tribe or for the clan. And they are going to start, uh, working on, on working with the roots of, of these flowers, um, and uh, it will take some time, but it seems like uh, perhaps perhaps all is is going to be well for the rest of the winter. Uh, perhaps uh, perhaps your uh, the elder of the of the village will or of, of the clan will survive and uh, will not depart from you this year, and will maybe have a chance to to hunt once again and. Uh, maybe find a better a better way to join the spirits, um, and uh, certainly certainly the the stories that you bring back to the camp uh, are going to be told and retold over the cold winter's nights um, around the campfires. Uh, maybe getting a little more embellished each time with with uh, uh, new details and. Um, you know, it, eventually, it's the sort of things that will that will be passed on through generations and and become you know part of the legend of, of your clan, part of the stories that you tell of, uh, uh, that are told uh, uh, for for years to come of of the the winter rescue of of one of the clan and the heroes who went out, braved the elements, and a, a ferocious cave lion and a pack of dire wolves to to save the life of. Not only a small girl, but also the elder of the village. And I think with that, we kind of fade into the, the mists of time. And this is another story that happens in the, uh, in the ages long past. <laughs> there you go. And that is your first game of D&D, guys. I was fun. so nervous. That was so much fun, though. <laughs> that, was, yeah, that was thrilling. <laughs> uh, Once again, and always, you are a masterful storyteller. Oh, thank you. So, uh, coming into it, like, what what did you have in your head of like what it would be like, and and what was it? What was this like compared to what what you had thinking coming in? In my head, it was a lot more awkward, and there was a lot more like I don't know, broken silences. But like <laughs> this felt like fun. Like we were, I I felt fully engaged the whole time. Like I was never far enough from the story to feel weird about it. Yeah. Like you did a fantastic job of keeping us like engaged and like working on a problem and together and in in the moment that it didn't get weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah going into it having having played you know dungeons and dragons um 
with you describing it as kind of like you know you're, you're stripping the magic out and you're doing this i'm kind of like i was imagining basically basically dungeons and dragons just without magic and i was like i just don't know i don't know how that works not not just like the magic mechanic but then like what what is the game then kind of like mm -hmm. if you strip out all the fantasy elements but like the inclusion of like exhaustion and mm -hmm. just like the story itself like the mechanics work really well and it's just it's it i used the word thrilling a second ago like it was a thrilling adventure that i was legitimately scared of like falling through the ice was like a big deal to me i was worried and like knowing i was exhausted going into that potential fight with the wolves i was like uh there's a possibility kerchak doesn't make it out of this and i don't know what that means <laughs> um so and then just seeing how like Again, they, the, some of the best, some of my favorite memories of playing tabletop games like this is the out of the box thinking. Um, you know, instead of going in guns blazing, um, you know, throw, you know, <laughs> throwing the rope down, throwing the the rations down, uh, was such a clever idea, and like, I kind of didn't expect it to work, but it did, and I'm glad because, like, the the mountain lion nearly ended us. I felt like, and having four of those. It was like was really intimidating in a way that um, a lot of like the fantasy battles don't feel because like I always felt like in the fantasy realm like there was I don't know even if I got hurt I would be able to be healed somebody would be able to do something this being so much more grounded I was like oh no if if I fall I, I'm gone <laughs> the wolves will tear Kerchak apart and that is the end so yeah no this was a real unexpected delight. Excellent. Yeah, you. I mean, you definitely. You all had characters who were strong, but you didn't have necessarily some of those support elements that can, uh, yeah, you know, help you in between the battles. So, so the battles might go <laughs> very well in your favor, but then afterwards, what do you? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's an interesting, you know, yeah, like kind that of those lingering choices. exhaustion, that, that mm -hmm. lingering exhaustion, and how it affects the character, like it. It changed the way I played, like in yeah. a way I wasn't expecting. Like I was thinking things like I'm gonna have like three less, you know, points for whatever I try to do. This could go really wrong. <laughs> yeah, and and three doesn't even seem like it's a big number until until it happens to you, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One was like whatever, but I was noticing like the differences just with two, and mm -hmm. then going into that last encounter with minus three, I was like. I could, you know, in theory, on paper, Kerchak can make that shot. I don't know if Kerchak can make that shot right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah. Um, Matt, uh, was it at all kind of what you were thinking going in, or like how 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 were you thinking? Because uh, uh, I, I know for both you and um, and Arden, this yeah, was both I of your first first game i really didn't know what to expect to be honest um i really enjoyed that um there's the um you know the the dice and everything kind of help guide everything i was i guess initially thinking it was going to be a lot more of like what um you know what are my ideas of like what's going to happen like trying to be a little bit more creative than i would need to be yeah. um kind of was intimidating but uh, yeah the having the i guess the board um aspect of it really helped guide the story and mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed that yeah yeah it, it, a lot of people talk about like the dice tell a story kind of thing and, and that's kind of mm -hmm. what's what's fun is it's like you have you have your character sheet which gives you certain certain parameters that you play in you have kind of like your idea of who you are you have the story and then the dice kind of guide you within it and like help you yeah it's it's kind of a fun it it doesn't put all of the weight on just your imagination or just on right. like having to to act something right like it's not it's not like it's not just like improv or something like that right like it's there's a whole right. like there's, there's many levels back from that yeah that's how it like that's what I was nervous about. I was really worried that I was going to be like having to come up with all of this stuff. But 
the way this story unfolds, it's really like it feels natural. Like it's really easy to think about what you would do in that situation or what your character would do in that situation if you've chosen a character that's different from yourself. But Mm -hmm. it was fun to craft a character the way that you wrote out the player guide made it really beginner friendly. Um, Mm -hmm. We read through all of it, but even though it's still like, I felt like I was well prepared coming into it, but I still had no idea what was actually going to happen. It still unfolded a lot differently than I thought it would. Um, And the story just really pulled me in. It was so much fun. I was very aware of like, I'm going to be so self-conscious going into this because I, it's hard to be imaginative and it feels really vulnerable to be like just on the fly being imaginative, but um, it didn't feel difficult at all. It was so much fun to just like invest in and be like, Oh my, like we have to get to her. We have to get to Ira. <laughs> um, it was such a good story. It pulled us in so well and it made it just so much fun. Well, and, like the the small personal stakes of it all, like it, it's mm-hmm. not this huge, you know, world ending. Oh no, the wizard has the the book. It's <laughs> a little girl in the woods trying to save I don't know her grandfather, and it's like you want to make like I don't know. There, there's like an immediacy to it, like to the point of like I didn't want to take a long rest. You know, mm-hmm. it it works really really well. I don't know. I was very impressed. Good job, man. <laughs> well, and this was a great short story, but it also, like, had we been able to sneak away from the wolves, there would have been that discussion of, okay, do we just take her back or do we go looking for the flowers if we didn't know that she had them? Like, I right. can absolutely see the potential for so much more adventure and so much more time in that game. Yeah. Well, and you I can also... It beautifully as a short yeah. game, mm-hmm. but I can yeah, totally and- see a long game. Mm-hmm. Like, and to that, I can like even if you just did a series of short, uh, short adventures like this, I can one hundred percent see like the you kind of build your own clan, and so it's like being able to return back to the cave and getting together again next week. There's a new problem and a new problem. Like mm-hmm. this could be just it's an endless source of storytelling that you could do with this. Absolutely. 